Hi, welcome to the School of Healthcare Sciences, Cardiff University. My name is Paul Brown and I'm the admissions tutor for the Radiotherapy and Oncology course. What I'm looking to do in this presentation is firstly highlight what is involved in the profession of radiotherapy and oncology and the various roles that can be found which are performed by therapeutic radiographers. I'll then outline the course at Cardiff, what we have to offer and finally cover what we're looking for in potential students. Could you be the best part of their worst day? That's the broad introduction. Now on to more details about radiotherapy and oncology, or more precisely, therapeutic radiography. So what do radiographers do? You might well have come across our professional colleagues, the diagnostic radiographers, if you've had an injury or suspected disease. They produce images using x-rays, CT scans, magnetic resonance imaging, as well as ultrasound to assist in the diagnosis and follow-up of disease or trauma. The main role for the therapeutic radiographer is to use radiation in the care and treatment of people with cancer and their families and carers. So we plan and deliver accurately the high energy x-rays that are used to treat cancers and we're involved in all stages of the patient care from when they're referred into the radiotherapy centre through to their post-treatment follow-up. We're unique in the field of cancer care as the only healthcare practitioners who from day one of our education training are involved in working with people with cancer. All other healthcare practitioners in the field undertake a general medical, nursing or physicist training first and then specialise in the cancer field later. The officially recognised title within the UK is Therapeutic Radiographer and is recognised by the Health and Care Professions Council. But you might also come across some centres use the title of radiotherapist. So why do we need therapeutic radiographers? Well, one in two people born after 1960 will develop cancer during their lifetime. But approximately 60% of those now survive. So in the UK, there are over 2 million people now living post-cancer treatments. Radiotherapy is one of the main treatments in cancers alongside surgery and medicines such as chemotherapy, immunotherapy and so on. Um, currently 50% of cancer patients receive radiotherapy but we're anticipating this to rise to more than 60% by 2025. Over the last few years there's been a huge investment in new radiotherapy centres, equipment and staff. Radiotherapy involves very costly equipment. You'd initially be part of, and hopefully in the future, leading a team of radiotherapists or therapeutic radiographers using equipment which can cost anywhere between one and a half million to five million pounds per machine. The latest UK developments include protons and these centres in the NHS in Manchester and London. But the first centre in the UK to deliver protons is actually based a few miles outside of Cardiff at the Rutherford Cancer Centre in Newport. So what is radiotherapy? What's involved? Well, it's the use of radiation, but it doesn't affect the staff. It's planned and delivered by therapeutic radiographers in conjunction with a multidisciplinary team, which includes clinical oncologists, medical physicists, nurses, and other allied health practitioners such as physiotherapists, occupational therapists and dietitians. The closest analogy in terms of the role of the therapeutic radiographer is that of the pharmacist or chemist, where a GP writes a prescription and they then dispense it. Therapeutic radiographers work with the clinical oncologist who has overall responsibility, prescribes the treatment dose and signs off the treatment plan designed by the medical physicist or therapeutic radiographer. Therapeutic radiographer then sets the patient up, position them on the treatment couch to deliver the radiation treatment on a day-to-day -day basis. Each treatment takes about 15 to 20 minutes. However, the radiation beam itself is only on for a few minutes. The course of treatment usually given Monday to Friday and for some may only be a few days, but the majority of patients are treated for anywhere up to five or even seven weeks. As well as the technical aspects of the treatment, therapeutic radiographers support patients and their families, relatives and friends through the core cancer journey. We get to know our patients very well, often a very rewarding part of our job. 
Once planned, the radiation treatment is delivered through a variety of ways dependent upon the tumour type and its site or position. For cancers of the skin, a small unit may be operated and placed in position close to the skin surface. This you can see in the left hand picture. For 95% of patients, they will be treated on a machine called a linear accelerator or LINAC, which is much larger and rotates around the patient, as can be seen on the right hand side. Both these methods of treatment are known as external beam radiotherapy. We also use radiation to treat from within the body by placing sources of radiation close to the tumour. This is known as brachytherapy and is commonly used in treatment to the lung or cancers of the gynecological sites within the female. Again, these treatments are delivered by therapeutic radiographers in conjunction with clinical oncologists and medical physicists. As I mentioned earlier, the latest mode of treatment delivery recently arrived in the UK is protons. If you'd like further information, I'd suggest you watch the Horizon programme on BBC iPlayer called the £250 million cancer cure. Proton treatment differs from conventional x-rays using protons split from an atom. It's very specialised and is primarily utilised in the treatment of childhood cancers and a few adult cancers. Cardiff University is one of the few education centres for radiotherapy that has direct access to these facilities, as we have links to the Rutherford Cancer Centre in Newport and students visit the centre as part of their training. Once diagnosed with cancer, the first stage of the patient's cancer journey might be referral into the radiotherapy centre, where pre-treatment investigations are undertaken to stage and identify particular requirements. Radiation treatment is delivered to the cancer or tumour to sub-millimetre accuracy, in some circumstances below 0.5 millimetres. As therapeutic radiographers, we need to have a very good knowledge and understanding of how organs and various parts of the body relate to each other, as well as how they work and how they're impacted upon by the cancer itself. For many patients, in particular when treating the head and neck region, parts of the chest and pelvis, they need to be mobilized or kept still so that the radiation beam hits the tumor and minimizes the dose to the normal or non-cancerous cells and tissues. Here we can see immobilization shells being made in the mold room on the left-hand side picture which is a specific area of work in the radiotherapy centre, often staffed by therapeutic radiographers. And at Cardiff University, is a unique facility that we actually have within the university itself. On the right-hand picture, the radiographers are checking the markings on the treatment unit, aligning with the lasers to, indication, to indicate the position of the radiation beam prior to treatment. Once the clinical diagnosis and data has been collected, the treatment is planned by the therapeutic radiographers alongside medical physics staff. In order to minimise the possibility of geographical miss, we carefully plan the treatment via computers. You need to have a good technical eye, good spatial awareness and anatomical understanding. It takes a few days to get everything sorted prior to any patient beginning treatment. We need to be aware of possible damage to body and organs in respect of where the radiation beam passes through. We will use several individual beams or a moving delivery to get a high dose of radiation to the tumour. Before treatment can be delivered, we take images on the treatment set, the LINAC, and then compare these with the initial treatment planning images. We call this a reference image. When these match, then the radiographers will switch the machine on. Approximately 40% of our role is based upon imaging. As with diagnostic radiographers, therapeutic radiographers also take and utilise CT scans, MRI scans and ultrasound when we're planning treatment. As mentioned previously, the actual delivery of the radiation usually only takes a couple of minutes or so. The majority of radiographers work as treatment radiographers in radiotherapy, possibly specialising in certain anatomical sites or particular types of patients. So the left hand bottom corner shows the radiographers working, setting up a patient with a head and neck cancer. The main treatment on the main picture on the right gives an indication of the size of the treatment machine, and this can be quite daunting to patients, so we need to put them at ease. 
When the patient is actually being treated, we watch from outside the treatment room via closed circuit television as seen in the top left hand picture. Whilst the majority of people who have cancer are usually in their 50s and above, children and young adults are also affected. So another specialist role um, is the paediatric radiographer working with children who may only be a few months old up to around 24 years of age. So quite a range. Again, one of the roles that we have as radiographers is a review radiographer. Patients are often seen on a daily basis by the treatment staff, but once a week they're also seen by the clinical oncologists or specially trained radiographers. These radiographers are able to advise and independently prescribe medications to help treat side effects of the treatment. Again, another role that you might like to look at is the research radiographer. Research plays an important part and radiographers are often involved in develop and also utilise research as part of the education and clinical practice. From day one, you're working as part of a treatment team, which will include several qualified members of staff from one or two students per treatment unit. You require leadership skills to develop your team working capabilities as once qualified, you will be responsible for your own individual actions and as part of the team. Over time, you're likely to progress up a career pathway, possibly leading the individual treatment team or going into specialist leadership and management roles. Currently starting pay on qualification at band five after three years of training uh, is around 25,000 per year. If you go up the levels to a band six or band seven, where the majority of radiographers in, in radiotherapy are, um, you're likely to require further qualifications and training. And you may even get up into the heady heights of the band eight radiographers, which in a few years time would be just short of 90,000 uh, a year. From the summer of 2022, the pay scales for starting um, on new qualification would be around 27. Thousand. This is 37 and a half weeks, hours per week, um, and includes enhanced rates for larger city living and, and social hours if you're working in places like London. So as you can see, there are a variety of different roles available um, within radiography and also different roles from assistant to consultant practitioner in the clinical field, as well as research, leadership and education. You might also look to specialise in the education and training of future radiographers as an academic radiographer working in the university. As with some clinical roles in academic teaching and research, you need additional qualifications up to and including masters and doctoral levels. So that's the overall profession. Hopefully you're now inspired to become a radio therapeutic radiographer. So why come to study at Cardiff University? What does the Radiotherapy and Oncology course here entail? Cardiff University at the last research exercise was ranked in the top five universities in the UK and several allied health subjects, including Radiotherapy and Oncology, are ranked at number one in the UK. The School of Healthcare Sciences, or HCare, is aligned with the schools of medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, optometry, psychology and biological sciences to form one of three colleges in the university as the College of Biomedical and Life Sciences. The School of Healthcare Sciences is actually the third largest school in the university. We have a diverse mixture of courses and healthcare disciplines in the school, including the three branches of nursing, adult, paediatrics, mental health, midwifery, medical photography, occupational therapy, physiotherapy, operating department practitioners, diagnostic radiography and imaging, and of course, radiotherapy and oncology. The radiotherapy and oncology course at Cardiff is commissioned by Welsh Government to take 22 places a year, and we also have about two or three additional places for overseas students. We get approximately eight to 10 applications per place. The School of Healthcare Sciences is based in building called T. Dowry Sant at the University Hospital of Wales and our main campus we utilise the anatomy department um, the laboratory there 
The majority of learning and teaching does occur within T. Daly Sant. That's one of two buildings that are primarily used by the school. The other is Eastgate House in the city centre. In the main campus, in the anatomy department, we utilise cadavers or dead bodies, which people have donated to medical science education as part of our learning and teaching. Our clinical placements are located within the three radiotherapy centres in Wales, in the southeast at Belinda Hospital in Cardiff, the southwest at Singleton Hospital in Swansea, and approximately 40 miles along the M4, and then the North Wales Cancer Centre at Isbutty Glen Cluid on the A55 just outside Rill, about 180 miles north of Cardiff. We have a range of specific radiotherapy facilities on site in T. Daly Sant, including a virtual radiotherapy simulation suite, where we're actually one of the first UK universities to have the specialist VERT proton unit. We have a mould room to practice manufacturing and mobilisation devices, as seen earlier, a treatment planning system where you learn the skills to design the radiation treatments, along with the superficial treatment machine and image viewing facilities. Our course is taught over three years, with blocks of theory or clinical split approximately six to 12 weeks uh, each year. Over the three course, the three years of the course, you spend 55% of your time in theory in T. Dowry Sand and about 45% in the clinical centres. We rotate throughout the three clinical centres, so you would be going to all of them, where you work alongside qualified radiographers. One of the things that differentiates us at Cardiff that we also have specific academic clinical support radiographers, lecturers, based in each of the centres to help students when they're out in clinical practice, which maintains a link between academic delivery and clinical experience. We use a variety of learning and teaching to cover different subjects, physics, science, human anatomy, radiotherapy and oncology practice, patient care, professional and profession specific topics. And we also use a variety of assessment methods essays, assignments, exams, presentations, portfolios and a research project alongside lectures and tutorials, workshops and simulated methods. The, the teaching team at CARD is very experienced. We have a team of eight staff, five, of us, five to six of us specifically in the academic centre. We have two or three uh, additional staff outside in the clinical centres between us, we've got over 250 years experience as clinical and academic radiographers and researchers. And in late 2016, we were chosen as Society and College of Radiographers Radiography Team of the Year for Wales, the first academic team in the UK to win such recognition. So what are the benefits of studying radiotherapy and oncology at Cardiff? The course is recognised by the statutory UK regulator, the Health and Social Care Professions Council, and the Society and College of Radiographers. We look to educate and train our students with a specific career in mind, beginning with personal development that can be taken through into your clinical practice on qualification. Our graduates are highly regarded across the various radiotherapy centres where they go on to work. As a research intensive Russell Group University, students also undertake a live research project and our teaching and learning is underpinned with personal staff research. We have a range of links to overseas placements, which I mentioned a few minutes, as well as the usual vast range of university societies and groups. As mentioned earlier, we're a very experienced staff group, and uniquely, as you're looking at a course, possible course in Wales, you have the opportunity to learn Welsh if you so like. Along with two different course funding options, the Welsh NHS Bursary or Standard Student Loan System. Cardiff aims for 30% of its undergraduate students to study or work and volunteer for a board for at least three weeks during their course. That can involve undertaking work experience or voluntary work. And in order to support this, there are travel bursaries which you can apply for. As part of the course at Cardiff, students spend three to four weeks on an elective placement. That can be spent in the UK or they go across many parts of the globe. Not all the red pointers on the map are necessarily where the radiotherapy students have been, but 
we have seen them travel across the UK and Ireland, Canada, the US, Malta, Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand and Africa. Spending time on electives in radiotherapy centres, as well as travelling and seeing different cultures and perspectives on life. So having looked at what's undertaken on the course here at Cardiff, what are you looking, what are we looking for in our potential students? Well, if you have a look at the picture, these are some of the skills and abilities you need. You need to have a caring, empathetic nature to be able to support the patients and their families. You need to have the technical skills to be able to get through the treatments to put the patients into position. You need to have the ability to work with people, be a good communicator, working as part of a team and also on your own autonomously. You need to show those leadership qualities. We're looking for people who are able to work under pressure, have an interest particularly in science and a knowledge of the profession of therapeutic radiography or radiotherapy and oncology. In addition to those skills and abilities, we're also looking for a level of academic ability, which includes GCSEs and A-levels, minimum of five GCSEs at C or the new numerical grading system, which includes English language, maths, two sciences. Now that can either be two single sciences or a double science. We're not specifying which sciences they have to be. At A-level, we'd be looking at three Bs equivalent, so three A-levels, one of which must be a science, or a Welsh Baccalaureate, which would be in lieu of a non-science A-level. We're also considered the BTEC Science or BTEC Health Studies, and that would be a double distinction merit level. If you're looking to provide access uh, as a way in, the access to science or access to health courses, we would accept as long as they have a physics component and we'd be looking at a total of, 20, of 60 credits with a minimum of 27 distinctions and 18 merits. All our applications are considered on an individual basis, from school leavers through to mature applicants. In addition to the academic requirements, you'd be working with members of the public and possible vulnerable people, so therefore there are compulsory elements that you need to complete before admittance, including the disclosure and barring service enhanced DBS check, criminal record check, and an independent healthcare questionnaire. If you have any questions on any of these, please contact hcareadmissions.cardiff.ac.uk. Alongside your application, we also suggest you try to visit a clinical radiotherapy department. However, make it clear when you contact the centre that you're a potential student applicant, not someone just looking for work experience. This is a career utilising technical and good communication skills alongside a relatively physical job. You might be walking quite a bit in and out of the treatment rooms on a daily basis. Be aware you also need to rotate through the different departments across Wales, so you won't be spending all your time in Cardiff, although this is where you spend the majority of the time. Offers are only made to applicants who attend for interview. Selection is via a multi-mini interview, our means of assessing applicants against the core values of the NHS, of honesty, professionalism, care, compassion, and also gives you the opportunity to show your skills and abilities. We'd also advise you to submit an early application. We begin interviews in December each year with others running between January and March. So, could you be the best part of their worst day? Become a therapeutic radiographer. Make a difference. See the difference. If you'd like any further information, then specific links on the page there and give you bits around Radiotherapy at Cardiff a general site on radiotherapy, giving information on what the profession includes, and also the Society and College of Radiographers, who are the professional body for radiographers. Hope you found this presentation useful. Good luck and best wishes with your applications and future career.